Alright guys, so now we're going to work the back side of lesson 23. Um, we'll make a new video for each side, that way you don't have to scroll through so much. We're going to do lesson 24, so let's start with number one. Um, a small plane is flying at an elevation of 2,000 feet, okay? Um, right, so that means elevation is how high he's at. So he's flying at 2,000 feet. He ascends, which means he goes up, at 20 to 2,500 feet at a rate of 350 feet per minute. About how long does the ascent take? Okay, so first let's come up with an equation, then solve for the amount of time t that it takes for the ascent. So first he's at 2,000 feet, he's going to 2,500 feet. So kind of like the final answer, um, whatever you're looking for at the end, you put that alone. So 2,500 equals 2,000 plus 350 feet per minute, and uh, we'll call it M instead of T just to keep it at minutes, okay? So the number of minutes times 350 2,000. First thing we're going to do is subtract 2,000 from both sides, all right? And remember, if ever you have trouble with this equation, you could divide it into two parts. Whatever you do to one side, do to the opposite, do to the other, all right? You got 500 equals 350m. That's zero that goes away. So 350m. Now the next thing you're going to have to do is divide both sides by 350. So divide this side by 350. Divide this side by 350. Now it's not going to come out to be um, an exact answer so I'm going to use a calculator. All right. I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to do 500 500 divided by 350 is going to give me 1.42. Because of this 8, this 2 rounds up to a 3. So that's going to be 1.43 minutes. Answer choice is going to be thus B. All right. So take a second, make sure. And again, like I said, do these problems before I solve them. See if you can do them by yourself, okay? You're going to learn this stuff so much better. All right, now we're going to move on to question two. All right, so now let me, uh, let me zoom out a little bit here. Use this right here. All right, so we have the graphs of the linear equations y equal negative x and y equal 3x minus 8 are shown below. If negative x equals 3x minus 8, what is the value of x? Okay, so whenever you have two equations, if ever you want to figure out where these two equations intersect, you set the equations equal to each other. So you set 3x minus 8 equal to negative x, okay, which is what they do here. Negative x equals 3x minus 8. They say what is the value of x? All right. Well, it's pretty easy. You could just look here and say, okay, well, what is the value of where they equal each other? The x value is 2, so your answer is h. Okay. But also, let me show you another way to solve. We want to figure out where negative x equals 3x minus 8. Okay. So, let's do it. Let's say that negative x equals 3x minus 8. Let's solve for our x value. First thing you do, if you have an x on both sides, is get all the x's together, okay? So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides, okay? Now negative x minus 3x is negative 4x equals negative 8, because 3x minus 3x is 0, that goes away. Negative 4x equals negative 8. What do I do next? Divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4. So therefore this crosses out. So you're going to get x equals negative divided by negative is going to be a positive, right? Negative 8 divided by negative 4, x equals positive 2, which I already told you that was the answer. But this is the better way to solve for it, okay? Or a way to double check yourself, because on the tax you have as much time as you need. Why not double check just to make sure that you're doing everything correctly, okay? Now we're going to go on to question number 3. So, and let me uh, zoom in just a little bit more. Let's try it. Yeah, see if you can zoom in. There you go. 
Yeah, that's fine. I'm sure we can still see it fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Temperature in the room, 53 degrees before a heater was turned on. It's getting hotter. When the temperature was measured 15 minutes later, it was found to be 74 degrees. What was the rate of increase of the temperature in the room in F per minute? So the rate of increase, okay, we're going to call that R. We're going to say R is the rate of increase in the room, okay? What's the final temperature? Remember, we always are worried about the final temperature. Whenever we have these problems, the final or the end result is always alone. So the end result here is going to be 74. So 74 degrees is our end result. Initially, it was 53, okay? We heated it up for how long? We heated it up for 15 minutes. So 15 minutes times our rate of R is going to be um, the 74, okay? Now one thing you can do is you could always plug each of these values in for R and say, okay, which one of these values, if I plug it in, will give me 74 at the end, okay? Or we could also solve for it, which you should know how to do at this point. How do you solve for it? First thing is get this R alone, subtract 53 from both sides. You're going to get 21 equals 15R, divide both sides by 15, all right, so therefore again I'm going to use my calculator and I'm going to do uh, 21 divided by 15 is going to give me 1.4, okay, and I'm going to stand up just so when I look at this video I know if y'all can see if I do it stand up so I don't have to lean over every time, okay, so 1.4 is it up there, yep, that's answer choice B, okay, for that one. Answer choice is going to be B. So now we are going to move on to question number four. All right, question four. Jonas is buying ice and soda for a barbecue. Ice costs two dollars a bag. Soda costs three dollars per case. Jonah has $18 to spend. Which of the following combinations is he able to buy if he is to stay within his budget? If he stays within his budget, what does that mean? That means he either should spend less than or uh, equal to $18, okay? So let's just look at these examples to figure out. We're playing $2 for every bag of ice. So we got ice all in this column. So let's do $2 here. And we're paying uh, $3 per case of soda. $3 per here. So let's figure out what this would cost. This would be three bucks, two cases, two times three is six dollars, plus six times two is twelve, six and twelve is eighteen. Alright, so we can buy that. that one looks good. Let's see if the rest of them are no good. Three cases of soda, nine dollars, five ice, ten dollars, nineteen. Yep, that one's not going to work. Four cases, twelve, four bags, eight, twelve and eight is going to be twenty. All right, that's no good. One case, three bucks, eight bags of ice, 16, three and 16, 19. Only possibility is gonna be F. All right, just plug in and go for it. All right, let's do the next ones. Can we zoom out? Mm-hmm. All right, and you just move it up now. Yeah, turn, zoom in a little. And move it up. So move it up. Yeah, and then zoom in just a little bit. There you go. Now move it just a little down. All right, perfect. Okay. All right. The graphic equation y equal two x minus two is shown below. Okay. Remember, this is the y-intercept negative two. Slope is uh, two, which is two over one, up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. Just to give you a little quick review on lines. Now, which of the following is found in the solution set of y is less than 2x minus 2? I know we haven't talked about this too much, right? But let me explain it. y is less than 2x minus 2. y means less than means below. So that means everything here is shaded. That's how you would actually graph y is less than 2x minus 2. Now you just ask yourself, which one of these four lies in this area? 2, 2. Where's 2, 2? 2, 2. Two, two is on this line, which it says less than 
okay? So we actually do not include the line when it's less than. If it said less than or equal to, that'd be fine because this is equal to 2x minus 2, the line, right? But it doesn't say that. So therefore, this is not an option. All right. So let's take that one out. Let's look at 1, 1. 1, 1 is obviously on this side is greater than 2x minus 2. So that one's no good. 1, negative 1. 1, negative 1 is here. That one looks like a good answer. It lies on this side. Let's look at the last one, negative 2, 2. Negative 2, 2 is way over here. That's also greater than, okay? So your only solution is thus 1, negative 1. Now let me show you something else. <clears throat> you could also plug 1, negative 1 in for this and then ask yourself, does this hold true? So we plug in a negative 1 for y is less than 2 times our 1 minus 2. So negative 1 is less than 2 minus 2 is 0. Is negative 1 less than 0? Yes, that's true. That means this 1 negative 1 works. Let me plug in one that doesn't work so you see what I'm talking about. Um, let's plug in a 1, 1. That's the easiest one. So 1 is less than 2 times 1 minus 2. 1 is less than 2 minus 2 is 0. Is 1 less than 0? No, it's not. So that proves that that 1, 1 would not be a solution. So there's a couple ways to do that, okay? So now let's move on to number 6. All right. So if negative 5y is the solution to the equation 3x plus 2y equals 8, what is the value of y? So we're just going to plug in and, and solve for y because there's only one y that corresponds to negative 5 in this equation, okay? We haven't talked about this much, but this is actually the equation of a line. This is the standard form of an equation. If I look on my formula chart, okay, if I look uh, right here, standard form of an equation is a form ax plus by equals c. ax plus by equals c. 3 is your a, 2 is your b, 8 is your c. That's actually the standard form of an equation. Okay, we don't talk about it much because I prefer uh, slope intercept form. But anyway, this is an equation. There's only one y that corresponds to this negative 5. So let me just plug in. 3, this is our x, remember, times negative 5 plus 2y equals 8. Now we're going to solve for our y. Negative 15, 2y equals 8. We need to solve, get our y alone to solve for it. Bring this over, how do we do it? We add 15. <clears throat> so 2y equals 23. Now we need to divide by 2. So y equals 23 over 2, which 2 goes into 22 11 times, which is you'd have 1 left. So your answer would be 11 and a half, which is that. Or you want to see... Uh, yeah, I'll do it on the calculator. I don't think we need to. I'm not going to waste any more time. So that is your final answer, 11 and a half H. If you want, just plug in 23, 2 in your calculator, you'll get 11.5, which you know is 11 and a half. All right? So that is lesson 24.